I've recently been working on a series of videos discussing how to do multi-color epoxy inlays and at this time I needed to take a break from that to just go finish a project for my daughter. I was been, I've been putting off uh, projects around the house and projects she's asked me to do and I decided I needed to take a break to get that project done and since I was doing that project I decided I'd go ahead and videotape this instructional video. This video uh, along with some others that I'm going to make I'm going to start when I do a project for my family friends or clients and I think there might be some learning in there for people that are new to CNC's some people that have done it for a while might learn a thing or two but I'm primarily building this for people who have CNC's who might be a little intimidated on how to get started and I try to explain each step of what I'm doing so they could easily follow along and then duplicate the process with a similar item and so that's the goal of these videos and I plan on making several of them over the next few, several months. It just uh, just depends on what projects I have coming and what I think about making. So I'll try to do quite a bit of instruction in these. So if you're a seasoned cnc -er and you think you already know all this stuff, this may not be for you. But if you're somewhat intermediate or beginning and you're trying to learn how to use the Vectric VCarve software to actually do a project, some of the things that we go through in this instruction may be helpful. At least I hope so. This project is a sign that is different than some other signs. Most signs are either carved in or carved out. I have a couple of videos instructing on how to build signs that I did in cooperation with Laguna. I'll put some links in the description below. I'd put cards or something on the screen, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So this one is a little different sign, and it's one that's kind of in a cursive uh, writing uh, stand alone. And it's something that you could actually layer on top of another sign or use in some other way. So with that, let's go ahead and go through the instruction and at the end of the video I'll go through some of the techniques I think that were covered that might be beneficial to remember. With that, let's get started. In this video I'm going to design a sign for some bunk beds that I made for my grandkids a few months back. And my daughter wants a sign for each of the monk beds, one for each of the children's names. I've already done a couple of them to practice building the sign. And then I'm going to actually videotape this one so that I can demonstrate how that's done. The sign is 9 inches wide by about 48 inches long. That's what I have in my sheet. So if you look at my sheets, my sheet says 48 by 9. And the idea is just a simple name sign. Now I start out designing it in the landscape version or across the x-axis because it's easier for me to see. After I get it designed I'll go ahead and turn it 90 degrees for cutting on the actual CNC bed. So right now I'll just focus on the sign and here we go. So I'm going to bring in a font. It's a pretty straightforward sign but there are a couple tricks to it that I thought people might be interested in. First I'm going to use this Hello Honey font. So if you haven't used this font there's a couple things that I thought might be interesting in using this font. The first one is that to get the special characters which are those long tails and hearts and so forth you have to use a special tool. So, so when you want to call up the special characters you first got to call up a program that's on Windows called Alt Character Map. You can do that by going to the search bar and typing alt character. And when you do, you're going to come up with a little menu that looks something like this. And so in my case, I'm calling up my Hello Honey. And then I'm going to go to Unicode. I'm going to group by Unicode subrange. This menu comes up and I'm going to then select private use characters and that gives you this menu of characters you can use and uh, if you're not familiar with them that's things like hearts and tails and lead-ins etc so in this case my granddaughter's name is Lila and sometimes it's kind of hard to see but you can see that L there I hope so I'm going to select that and then I can type in Y L and now the last one is an A with a character going off to the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. There it is. There's the A. It's hard to see sometimes. I'm going to select that. A. And you can see it has this little tilde here and this little tilde or this tail, whatever you want to call it. Hit copy. And you put that up here in the text box. Hit control V. 
for copy. And now you can see, let me center that in the material. And you can see it's centered and now we can resize it. And to resize it, I'll go ahead and put, leave the link XY there. And I'm going to put 7.5 initially apply. And that's because if I want this sign to actually be sturdy, I'm going to have to make it a little thicker. So we're going to have to do some exercising in making it thicker. So let's take a look here and first, and I'm going to center it again. So let's take a look at some of the lengths or widths of some of this material and see how thin it is. So if we do an inspection tool, we can see here that's only 0.13, so that's an eighth of an inch. So that's not going to hold together, you know, it's going to fall apart and break if we're not careful. So the first thing I do is I'm going to make this sign bigger by going to the offset tool and I'm going to go out, I'll try 0.25 outwards and I hit delete original and I hit offset and so now my sign is going to look like this and if I like the looks of that then I'll be okay with that but in reality I think I took it a little too much so I'm gonna hit control Z and instead of 0.25 I'm gonna go 0.2 and I'm not going to delete the original because I'm going to want this A and this L and they're going to get lost if I'm not careful. Offset. All right, so now you can see I've got a separate O here. So let's go take out the parts of the original that I want to take out. So I'll hit delete. And now you can see I'm left with this sign or name. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to move these two over just a little bit. Alright, now when I look at the thickness of this piece, it was one eighth of an inch. I can see that it is 0.5 inches across, which is a lot thicker. And I can see these other areas are about an inch across. So I want it still to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more and what I'm concerned about is this disappearing right here at the moment. So I want to potentially do a little change to that. I'm going to take out all of as many curves. I'm going to curve fit this. Leave it at Bezier Curves. Hit Preview. Hit OK. And you can see it reduced the number of nodes significantly. Hit N for nodes. So now I'm going to go ahead and on the outer side of this only, I'm going to do another offset. And instead of 0.2 that big, I'm just going to do 0.1. And let's delete the original for a second. And see if I like that. So this is the original. And this is now the new one. And I like this for the most part with a couple of exceptions. This one here, I would like to have this a little more round. So I'm going to hit Node Edit. And once again, I'm going to fit the curves. Preview. So I'm going to hit S. And that smooth, smooths that out a little bit. I would like this to be a little more round, so I hit Node Edit. And I'm going to bring that up. I like that shape a little better. I think. Alright, well, let's see how that looks. Let me, I'm going to open this one up now. Hit 
go back to regular node and I'm going to use the offset tool again and I'm going to go outwards right and I'll delete original and I'm going to add point 0.2 back into that that might be a little too much let me go to point 0.1 offset okay that's a little that's a little better I think maybe a 0.05 more again this is just a personal choice close and I'm going to center the sign okay it's centered I'm going to take and move this to a layer called new layer Lila outside and actually that's not all outside so I'm going to change this in a second I'm going to take this one this one this one and this vector and I'm going to move those to a layer called Lila inside and you'll see why I do that in a minute. I'm sure I probably misspelled that, huh? Yep. All right, so now I have the sign looking the way I want to look it. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate the direction of this sheet. So I go to Sheets and I go to Lila and I go edit and it's going to be 48 high and 9 inches wide I'm going to cut it off the machine bed because I'm going to carve all the way through on all this and that gives me the least damage to my surface of my spoiler board I hit OK and now I'm going to rotate and I like I like to group when I do this rotation to keep everything together so I'm going to hit 9, 9, I hit 9 twice and then I'm going to simply center this in the material again so now I'm centered in the material and that's the size of the sign I want and the reason I made it 48 inches is because my other grandchildren's names are longer and it took that long but in this case it's not going to take as long the limiting factor is actually the width of the sign the bed uh, sides are nine inches or so and so as much as this is I want it to be no more than eight inches so you can see that in X is right at 8.1 inches hit apply and that'll keep everything consistent with the other two signs that I made and now the material I don't need it to be 48 inches let's see how long do I need the material to be I may actually not even have to tile uh, this material so I'm going to select the uh, name I'm going to hit resize and I can see that this Y is 30 inches so I won't even have to tile in this case because my machine bed is 36 inches so I'm going to hit close and now I'm going to move this all down to you. Give me some home bound space and still be within the 36 inches. So I'm going to align it to the center. But instead of center the whole center, I'm just going to align it, align it so it's centered in the horizontal direction. And now I can make this material instead of hit edit, instead of being 48 inches. Hit OK. And so now I have a sign that's set up for 34 inches long, 9 inches wide. And now that we have our sign designed, it's uh, time to set up the tool pass. So let's go through that process. I recall earlier I grouped this to center it. So now I'll have to ungroup. Hit the U key so that I have two separate tool paths, one for the outside and one for the inside characters. So we'll go to the tool path menu at this time. You can do that by clicking over here and pinning it. That's one way. 
The other way is to switch tabs by going over to the left side and just switching which menus are up. So the first toolpath I want to set up is the inside cuts for getting of the letters. So I will set up a profile toolpath. The cut depth is, I usually like to put Z plus 0.01 to get all the way through the material. I'm using quarter inch plywood, so I want to use a compression bit. I, in my last sign, I did a similar sign and I went ahead and used a down cut bit because I had broken um, my compression bit in an earlier project. Something else to talk about in another video. So I switched over to this down cut and you know I just didn't like the results on the bottom. There's Terra. When you don't have a compression bit and you're using plywood, uh, I have not had real successful results with plywood it tends to splinter right on the last veneer layer if I'm using a down cut on the bottom if I'm using an up cut on the top so I'm going to go ahead and select a compression bit that I do have it will end up cutting a little slower make sure I switch to plywood this is a 1 8 inch compression bit so it's going to be a little bit on the slower side relative to feed rate and speed rate Take a note of the recommended spindle speed on this bit. It's 11,000, so I'll have to change that on my machine when I cut. I'm going to take four passes. Uh, that's okay with me at the time. At this time, the first pass needs to get deep enough so it's through the actual upcut portion of the bit. So the first pass has to be 0.1 inch. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first pass and change that to a depth of 0.1 inch to get through the upcut portion get apply save that so that makes sure the upcut portion of the bit gets through the upper layer first select inside right because we're going to be inside these vectors here we don't need a separate last pass we don't need to add any tabs we don't need a ramp in fact we don't want a ramp because we're using a compression bit and we're making sure we go through the initial layer first we will make sure that we've got the right vectors selected by associating with tool pass Pick lila inside, close. We can see it's got those vectors selected. Call this lila inside. Calculate. We expected that. We won't preview yet. Hit close. Now we'll go to the inside. Select the 2D view. We want another profile pass. Same setup here, nothing's changed. We've still got the same bit here. We do want to check the first pass. It's back at 0.06 because that's the normal pass depth that we want to take in a very conservative way. So we'll go and apply 0.1 again to the first pass. Hit apply. Hit OK. And then we don't need a separate last pass. We do need to add tabs and we need to Make sure we got the right vector selected. That's why it went on the inside. Go to Lila outside. Hit close. You'll see the vectors redistributed and that looks good to me. I'm going to call this Lila outside. Calculate. Hit OK. We'll go ahead and preview it this time. And that looks pretty good to me. If you want to see it without these little pieces in there, you can double click on those and that'll make those disappear. If you didn't have tabs, you could double click on the outside, but because I put tabs in, that won't work. Hit close. One other item I should probably check is to make sure there won't be any hold down issues. So I change to the 2D view and I'll go ahead and go to drawing tab. I'll import my bed map. I'm going to group this to make sure it stays together and now I'm going to go ahead and move this line and I know that my fence on my left is one inch in okay so I'll put a reference guide right next to the board here because I'm going to actually be moving my spoiler SVG I'm going to create a new guide relative to that guide minus one inch away create new guide close and now this is the guide that my reference is so I'm going to move my spoiler board SVG over so it lines up with 
lines up along the fence just to check to make sure I don't have any interferences for hold downs and as I can see I don't have to worry about holding anything down with this cut I can go ahead and put some screws in at the top and I won't interfere with these bolt holes some screws in the bottom won't interfere with those bolt holes and then the other thing that I can do is I can put a screw here let's take a look at where that is put a guide down here so as long as I'm keeping my screws above 20 inches and below 10 inches I have anywhere from 1 to 5 inches that I can put the screws in so actually I should move this up here and I'll make a little text 22.25 0.5 inches there and put control C V and I'm gonna put this at 10 inches this at 10 so now I have some guidelines on where I can put my screws and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture basically I'm using Snagit capture you could use WinZip anything now I know where I can put my screws and other things and I'll save this picture that I just took to my phone so this is a picture I have on my phone that when I go out to put in my hold downs you can see I have the tracks the bolt locations and a couple key spots on here this is the very end uh, this is from my bed mapping before and so I can move this around pretty much anywhere I want by knowing these measurements I put a couple key measurements on here 22.25 up from the bottom of the board 10 inches up from the bottom of the board so I know if I move the board around I just adjust for where the board is and I know that I've got 0.5 inches here on the top of these edges and on the bottom of this edge and that gives me all I need to know to be able to properly put the hold down screws in to make sure I don't have bit damage and that I have a good proper hold down. So I have this on my phone and my iPad through my photos app. I'll just pull it up when I start to connect the board to the, to the bed. Now that we have our tool pass defined, we know where we're going to sit the board on the bed. Everything's set up to go out and cut. We'll go ahead and transfer these tool pass to our USB drive and we're using the same bit we've made sure that we've got Lila on the inside cut first and then we're going to cut the outside Lila outside so we can save this to our USB drive and they can be saved in one tool path by collecting visible tool pass to one file we could select uh, each toolpath or to multiple files, but in this case, we don't have tiled toolpaths. So we want to make sure we turn that off. Hit Save Toolpath. Make sure my post processor is correct, and it is. I'll call it for Lila. And I only have one toolpath, so I'll put down 125 for 8th inch compression. And I'll know that's my compression bit that I'm using. Hit Save. And now I have the toolpath saved and ready to go cut the project. Okay, I'm back. I like to show my errors so other people can watch for these things, as embarrassing as it gets. But one of the things I noticed, I went out to cut the material, and instead of coming over to this pocket, and then this pocket, or this pocket, and this pocket, the machine immediately started coming over to this corner. And that told me that the machine was getting ready to cut this profile cut before it cut the pockets. So you want to be on the lookout of is the machine going in the direction you think it should. I instantly realized that because I created this new pocket tool path, what I'd forgot to do was put this so that it cut actually before the profile cut. And the way to do that is to move it up in a high order and then the computer will first cut the pocket cut and then the outside profile cut when it combined the tool tool pass. So I realized that was a problem, stopped immediately and came up here and I'm going to switch the two tool pass in the right order. Something to be looking for when you're cutting, make sure that the cutting head is going in the general area that you thought it should go. So now I'll save these to the USB drive and start again. Okay at this time I'm actually pulling up the uh, photos app and you recall I had my bed information saved on there. I've got my bed information on the photos app and so I can know where I can put in the right holes and <coughs> make sure I don't have any problems with interference. That's what I'm going to do right now. No reason to watch that. Okay, I've zeroed the machine uh, to the bed. I'm getting ready to cut and I realize that I have to actually change the speed, the spindle speed, and the spindle speed for this bit is supposed to be 20,000. And on the Laguna controller, 
you basically take or whatever the spindle speed is divided by 60 and that'll tell you what you've got to put on here. So I'm going to put 333. One thing I noticed after I started cutting is I had used a profile cut uh, and originally when I designed this project I'd used a quarter inch bit so there was really hardly anything left in the center that could bind up or create a problem with the bit or breakage um, after it was done so I didn't put any tabs in there. Now I switched to a 1 8 inch bit and because I switched to a 1 8 inch bit I now have a piece in there that could actually get lodged in between the bit and the plywood and break the bit. So I'm going to have to change that. So I need to take a break and either change that to a quarter inch bit or I need to change that to a pocket tool pass. So I'm going to do that at this time. There's a sign after it's cut out. Looks pretty clean on the top. Key points I think we covered in this video that could be helpful to some. The Hello Honey font is a very popular font. We didn't talk about importing the font. There are videos out there on how to import fonts. Mark Lindsay has uh, at least one or two that might be helpful. Go check out his channel. But the part that I went into was how you actually get to the special characters, uh, the long tails, the hearts, etc. How we uh, use, can use the offset tool to actually get letters imported that don't seem like they'd work to the right size that will allow us to cut them. So we made very thin letters into large letters simply by using the offset tool multiple times and paying attention how to do that. We also talked about uh, how reducing nodes uh, for trying to manipulate those vectors can help make it easier and more manageable when you're trying to actually change uh, the vector look and modify it. We talked about creating layers for toolpath strategies. I always like to keep each toolpath I'm going to do on its own layer and that way it uh, will be consistent from one project to the next if I have to cut it again. It allows for easier setup and it's a method recommended by Vectric in their tutorials. We talked about resizing and demonstrated how to resize the sign to incorporate cutting strategies. Various uh, That also led to some vector manipulation but uh, demonstrated how we can make it bigger or smaller using the resizing tool and why that uh, methodology works best. At least in, I like it the best for uh, most of my signs. Uh, Toolpath setup and considerations when using a compression bit. We talked quite a bit about a compression bit even though we ended up not using one. And the key thing there is make sure that the first pass has the bit going deep enough to get beyond the upcut section. We talked about using a bed map for helping to prepare for carving hold down strategies. I've got an earlier video on that. If you're interested in looking at that, I'll try to put that in the video description. And we talked about setting a spindle speed for Laguna. So if you're a Laguna person, that may be helpful. And we talked about how you always have to be prepared for things not going as planned. The example was we actually started a profile strategy on the toolpath when I should have used a pocket strategy. And if you're not um, paying attention to that when your machine is cutting, you can find out that you have a broken um, bit or something else bad can happen. So you always want to be paying attention to that and you want to have an idea ahead of time what you expect the bit to be doing. The profile versus pocket strategy becomes important and I've done this once or twice where I wasn't paying attention and the bit actually got jammed because either the tab wasn't thick enough and it broke loose or I forgot to put tabs in there thinking it wouldn't be needed. So make sure that you have 
a lot of strength when your bit is coming through so that the piece won't break loose and jam up against the bit and the other piece of wood. There is a danger of bit jam failure. I hope some of these key points were helpful to some of you. If there are other key points that you think you would have liked me to have in the video or you think I missed, go ahead and put that in the comments section so I can add it to a future video. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure making this video for you and I appreciate you watching it. If there's anything else you would like to see, just like I said, put it in the comments section. Also, I appreciate it if you would like, comment, share this video, and if so inclined, subscribe so that you can get future videos. Thank you for your time.